He sat down to write a poem. One about life and things. One that would tell and shriek and yell. One that would soar and sing. He would mention his mind and, and the trees and the sea. And his heart and his girl and their love. He defined what was good, what was bad, what was odd, and add a coda to God. So he thought and he pondered upon all these things till his being rumbled with fear. So he put down his pen, lit a cigarette, then ended his poem right here. Now, Bernard, Mr. Smith, how do you keep all them poems in your head straight like that? I mean, you've been going on like this for a couple hours. <laughs> Just a simple accident of nature, Mr. Cartwright. Like warts. <laughs> who, uh, who wrote this one? An ancient druid priest, name of Kaliwabbles, who was foully slain by a pack of rabid suffragettes. For the inner man. Neath the weeds and the wild berries, near the barren praying trees, past that gash of a road by my home, stood the deafness first strike you, friend? Look, mister, I've been putting up with your stuff for near an hour now. That's long enough, I'd say. Then you don't plan to cease playing that machine. No, I don't. In that case, I shall strike you so hard that you will have to remove your boots to brush your teeth. Here, have a drink. Come in. What have you got in here? Here? Yeah. Oh, I just got a little food I'm taking out the barn. Has your horse developed a fondness for peach pie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this ain't for my horse. It's, uh, it's for a feller I met in town. I... What, you put him up in the barn? 
Well, yeah, he was sort of sick, see, Paul, and I... Of course, we always put sick people up in the barn. Well, he ain't exactly sick, you see. He, uh, he had a little too much to, to eat. That said, he overate. He ah, ate yeah. too much, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why you're bringing him some more food. Ain't doing too well, Emma. Not so far. <clears throat> well, the truth of the matter is, Paul, he had a little too much to drink. Ah. Uh -huh. No, the truth of the matter is, he had a way too much to drink. He's drunk. Oh, I see. Oh, Steve, why do you always have to turn this place into a, a home for grown-up foundlings? Well, Paul, I couldn't just leave him in town. Oh, of course you couldn't leave him in town. Anytime some fellow runs into town and gets himself roaring drunk, it becomes your responsibility. Right? Well, it does if I bought him some of it. Oh. Look, Paul, I was perfectly honest, and I, I just bought him a couple of drinks while he was reciting. While he was reciting? Well, he, he wasn't exactly reciting. He was... He was telling me what a good hand he was. That's what he was doing. Oh. And I remember you telling us that we needed a new hand. Oh, well, wait a minute. You didn't hire him. Well, Paul, he had, he had awful good references. Well, so far, the only references I've heard is that he gets drunk. Oh, boss, I, honestly, I... Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try him out anyway. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just take this one out. There's one good thing about the whole situation, though. At least he's a ranch hand. He's not one of those other strays that you're always bringing home. <laughs> Kind of you not to forget your old granny. <laughs> There's some good chicken in here for you. You didn't bring a bottle? Look, Mr. Smith, we gotta sober you up. Why? Because you got a job here, that's why. I have a what? Well, you you broke, you ain't got no money, so you must need a job. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything on a ranch. You learn. Why are you so interested in me? Well, I sort of back myself into a corner, I reckon. I'm sort of committed to you. What will I have to do? Well, the first thing you gotta do is sober up. Now, go and try some of that chicken, it's good. Anything to drink? Yep, sure have. Assassin! <laughs> Shade. 
Don't you know you can kill a man like that? Well, there's one thing for dang sure. Work ain't gonna kill you. I, uh... Oh, what happened was I, I had to move into the shade because I felt a sunstroke coming on. Yeah, I imagine that 100-proof sunstroke must be pretty rough stuff. Now, look, we're not paying you to sleep, you know. Joe, you heard him. He said he felt a sunstroke coming on. What, you gonna believe that? Well, I don't see any reason why not to. Brother, remind me to talk to you about the Easter Bunny sometime. Your faith in human nature is refreshing. Your uh, brother seemed to think I was lying. Come on, Will. Let's face it, let's be honest. You got a hangover that's longer than a 20-foot log on a 10-foot buckboard. Well, if you think that, well, why I'll did you... I'll tell you, my friend. I, I just got a feeling that somewhere mixed in with all that booze and baloney, there's a man. You're taking a lot for granted, aren't you? Maybe I am. Last night in the Silver Dollar Saloon, you were a man. Oh, you were all liquored up all right, but you knew what them words was about. You knew what they meant and why. So I figure somewhere in that frame, there's enough of a man that it's worth the trouble. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, Will. I'm gonna sit down right over there, and I'm gonna watch you. Chop that stump down to size if it takes all day and all night. Get the chopping. Go on. No one told me that the tree stumps on the Ponderosa were made out of stone. Better get a move on, Smith. That's supper. Now, don't mention food to me. I'll eat your share. you limb from limb. Be reasonable, Draves. All I want is this little sip. That's all. Just a steady... That's my bottle. You took it from my saddlebag. Please, Draves. Hand it over, Smith. what you're looking for? That's mine, Mr. Cartwright. He took it from my saddlebag. Is that true? Well, is it true? Yes! You be sure you're off the Ponderosa by morning. Boss. 
You don't know how bad it can get. Yeah. I reckon I don't will, but I know how bad you can get now, don't I? of man. One rises from his chair and confirms the affirmation of... <laughs> well, if you would stop and think about it, you realize that there has to be a certain trust between human beings. No more credit. But in a healthy economy, there has to be a certain amount of give and take. All right. A poem, then. Now, that's another thing you and me better get straight. I heard enough of your poems to last me forever. But if you would just allow me to... Look, Rumbum, get out. I'm sick of you. No ape is going to dictate terms to me. <laughs> I'll funnel you with your hands your life. Take care of them. You go ahead with your laughing. Come on, Will. Come on. I'm not drunk, Hoss. I'm just dying. Some people refuse to accept the fact that the human brain was never meant to be pickled in alcohol. Yeah. He is going to be all right, though, ain't he, Doc? Man's got the constitution of a horse. And if he keeps on drinking, he'll have the lifespan of one also. Let's see. Oh, I'll need his name for the prescription. Yeah, it's Will Smith, I think. Not according to this. William Warlock Evans? Evans? Here's a letter addressed to him. From San Francisco, from a Mrs. Lydia Evans. They got to be his wife? That couldn't be the one that's a poet, could it? Oh, well, I never heard of him. William Warlock Evans is one of the most gifted young poets this country's got. Do you suppose that's him in there? You know, Doc, it just could be. 
As a matter of fact, I'll bet you it is. Damnation! Damnation! I'm stripped in a buff! Hey, Will. Come on. Hey, lay down, buddy. Hey. Relax, relax. Come on. Stop thrashing about here. Come on, relax, Will. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down and relax, buddy. Come stay on. Down. Come on. Uh, say there. Where do you think I could go dressed like this? You're feeling dizzy? No, this is the way I always talk. Well, I've got some sad news for you, my friend. You're gonna have to stop drinking. What did it take you all eight years of medical school to figure that out? Well, so I'll leave Mr. Evans' prescription down with Matt Graber. All right. You can pick it up there. Yes, sir. You know, I always felt there was a certain resemblance between doctors and bartenders. They both strive to remove pain. Then they restore the agony with a bill. <laughs> Oh, if they were going to be fair about it. What did he call me? He called you Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? What are you going to do? I don't know. I can tell you what I'd like to do. I'd... I'd like to take you back to the Ponderosa and dry you out. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker, but I got a notion that a man like you is worth it. And as soon as we got you on your feet again, we can get a hold of your wife and get her out here. No! What do you think I'm running from? Look, I'd, I'd rather burn in hell through all eternity than to spend one second with that woman. Well, that's, that's sort of up to you, Will. Yeah, your father wouldn't take me back anyway. I'm a convicted thief, drawn and quartered. Yeah, but once he finds out who you are... No one is to know who I am. I mean that. I've carried the burden of being William Warlock Evans too long. Now, you still think you can get me that job back? I don't know. But we can try. Well, so far, you haven't given me one valid reason. Boy, I just think he needs help, that's all. No, he needs help, all right. I think we're all in agreement with that. Hoss, I, I don't want to appear hard. Oh, Paul, I know your point, but that Bernard, I got one, too. It, it, it's easy to explain as yours, but, boy, if you'd have seen him out there today when I picked him up, you'd know what I was talking about. You want to hire him? All right. You hire him. You pay him. You'll be responsible for him. Yes, sir. He's out there in the bookhouse. I think I'll go tell him right now. The boy's just too easy going for his own good. I agree with you, Pa. You're absolutely right. He's got that silly notion about trying to help people. I just don't know where he gets it from. Your food's getting cold. <laughs> it looks like wood. It feels like wood. <laughs> But it saws like iron. 
<laughs> well, how am I doing, Professor? Well, I'll tell you, Will, you get a you get an A for effort. But I'll have to give you an F for results. Let me show you something. Here. Don't fight it so. Don't use just your arms. Get your whole body in. Get you a nice rubber. Look at that. Well, I admit it's worked so far, but I don't think that two weeks is going to change Will all that much. You said yourself that he's packing his share of the load now, Paul. Well, sure, that's because he doesn't stop to quote poetry every time a leaf falls off a tree. Yeah, I don't know if that's altogether good either. Well, I'll tell Charlie we'll pick the rest of this stuff up next week. Yeah. Are you Mr. Ben Cartwright? Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? I am Mrs. William Evans. Yes, Miss Evans. I've been making inquiries, and I have reason to believe that my husband is one of your employees. Evans. William Evans. Well, ma'am, we have a we have a, a William Smith, and a, we have a, a Bill Perkins. And Paul, it's Will Smith that you're talking about. Ma'am, I'm I'm horse cart right. And Will is out on the Ponderosa, yes. Will Smith is really William Warlock Evans, Paul. The poet? I I, th I thought he was dead. He is. In more ways than you can imagine, you tell Will that the game's over. I found him. I'm at the hotel. You can bring him there. Oh, ma'am, uh, we can take you to him. I've come this far, Mr. Cartwright. Now he has to come to me. so soon. You didn't expect me to finish in two hours, I hope. That ain't why I'm here, Will. You know, I used to always sneer at writers who wrote about the joy of work and nature. But after the day, I don't think I'll sneer anymore. <laughs> I'll throw rocks. Will, what I, what I came to tell you was your wife's in town. She wants to talk to you. Did you send for her? Certainly not. Don't lie to me. I ain't lying to you. I ain't never lied to you, have I? Come getting out of here. I'm taking that horse. Will. Will. You run if you must. But you ain't stealing my horse, you hear? Well, you ain't gonna stop me. I trusted you like I trusted her. And you both betrayed me. Well, I'm getting out of here. Go ahead, kill me. Will, I don't know what that woman done to you, but... Why don't you kill me? I'm begging you. You're a man. A man will beg. <laughs> You're right. They don't surrender, either. I'm surprised he took your horse. That's a new low, even for Will. I don't rightly know what got into him, ma'am. He simply reverted to type. He ran. Well, the direction he headed up toward those mountains, there's only one town up there. A few Mexican families and a little cantina. We could be up there in no time. Did you? Tell Will that I was here. Yes, I did. And you don't have the heart to tell me it was that bad, wasn't it? 
Whatever he said was foul and violent, and then he left. He ran. Well, ma'am, it wasn't it that Will didn't want to face you. It was... He can't face himself, don't you see? Well, I am tired of chasing after Will. I have followed Will through more dirty little towns than I can name. And <laughs> for so long that it's... It's almost a habit. Well... Well, habits can... can be broken. Ma'am, ma'am, I, I don't know what went on between you and Will, but... No. No, you do not. That's why you're willing to go after Will, to try to help him again. Well, I won't go after Will. I, I can't do it anymore. Oh! gave it to me on our fifth wedding anniversary. A golden brooch to match the golden light in your eyes, he said. So, you see, Hoss, things haven't always been like this with Will and me. But that time is over, and I'm going to forget about Will. And I advise you to do the same. Ma'am, can you do that that easy? Easy? I never said it was easy. Um, I... I have a lot of packing to do. Would you... would you excuse me, please? Yes, ma'am. plays like a fallen angel, doesn't he, my friend? They say Miguel was born with a guitar in his hand. Uh, <laughs> Talent is a curse. An albatross slung around the neck like the last banner of defeat. <laughs> it enhances the thirst, my friend. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No, senor. My friend, of all the creatures in the world, man is the unhappiest. And yet you smile. Why? I enjoy being alive. Let's straight to that. Don't you think you've had enough, senor? There's never enough until there's oblivion to life. May it last forever. Yes, may it keep us all warm. Salud, senor. Would you mind if I lowered my head for a moment to rest my eyes? 
I feel suddenly quite ready to pull down the curtain. Señor! 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 Jesus, you in there? Estamos cerrados. We're all closed up. Jesus, it's me, Hoss Cartwright. Oh, Señor! Un minuto. Buenas noches, Miguel. Buenas noches, Hoss. First loony came to him. Is he a friend of yours, senor? Yeah, he's a friend. He stole my horse. There is a lot of sadness in this man. See how he sleeps like a baby. You want to take him home? No. Might as well let him sleep as long as he can. You got a place to keep him? See the back room? Good. If he wakes up before I get back, you keep him here, even if you have to hit him with a club, you hear? Don't worry, he won't wake up. Miguel, ayúdame. The bags are right over. I hate to bother you again, Miss Evans. But you found Will. Yes, sir. Did you tell him that I was leaving? Well, I couldn't. You see, he was asleep. He was drunk, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Well, why did you come here? Why couldn't you let me go in peace? Well, that's just it, ma'am. I figured if I let you leave now that you'd never know another minute's peace the rest of your life, because you still love him. Can a woman love insults? and threats and tantrums? No, ma, I reckon not, but she can love the good she finds in the man and try to help him. I have tried. What else can I do? Well, try once more. Do you think it's really worth another try? Isn't it always? We've come to help you, Will. <laughs> Aren't I lucky to have such a conscientious little mother? Yep. I'd say you were at that, Will. Look at her. Standing there, the, the symbol of martyrdom. And she glories in it. Don't you have anything to say to me, my love and keeper? See, she's dumb literally as well as figuratively. Well, I'm going to say something, Will. 
I'm getting pretty fed up with you picking this woman apart when all she's trying to do is... No. That's exactly what he wants. Someone to argue with. Someone to attack. No. Listen to the woman. It's the truth, Will. And you know it. This is the way you keep me from getting close to you, with ridicule and insults. Just so I won't see how frightened you are. Frightened? Me? <laughs> Dear girl, and that's a charitable term if I ever heard one. I am William Warlock Evans, and I happen to possess a writing talent commonly acknowledged by all. And there's not one thing in this whole flaming world that frightens me. Except William Warlock Evans. She's talking in riddles. She's talking a lot of sense, Will. Oh, and that's your considered opinion? Yeah. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you something else that's my considered opinion. No question about it, Will. You're a great writer. But you're something else, too. You're pathetic. Fire! Even a marionette has more guts than I do. Get him to the table. Come on, Will. Come on. can't fight it any longer, Will? Well, I can't fight it for you. So we'll forget that we are husband and wife and we'll be married to this. I can't pull you out of the gutter, so I'll just crawl right in with you. To William Warlock Evans and his memory. Lydia, no. Don't do that. You don't care what happens to yourself. What do you care what happens to me? For the rest of your life, Will, I'm going to be right with you. Glass for glass and bottle for bottle. I'm going to be a mirror that you can't escape. A twisted, warped image what I've had to live with all these years. Why do I do this to you, Lydia? What, what kind of a man am I? you can call a man is a million years in one shape. Remember that, Will? Did you ever finish it? I can't finish it! Don't you understand that? I'm burned out. I'm a shell of an artist. Why can't you see that? Why can't you see it? That flame you had inside you, it's still there. You still got it. You're just too close to it, that's all. You really believe that, don't you? The whole world believes it, Will. That's what we're trying to tell you. Why? Why do you bother with me? After what I've done to you. 
because I love you. It's as simple as that. Take my hand, Bill. Maybe it's worth a try. Another try, Lydia. It always is. filled with chicken pie. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. I went down to old Joe's house, never been there before. He slept on a feather bed and I slept on the floor. Oh, I went Andy? down to... Come here, boy. Yes, sir? You should have been on your way to town a half hour ago. I'll have the wagon loaded in a minute, Pa. I'll just have a couple more sacks of grain. Well, get that wagon loaded and get out of here. I want you back by noon, understand? Yes, sir. I got work for us to do. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be back in time. And boy. Yes, sir. Don't let me catch you loafing again here. I wasn't loafing, Pa. Honest. Singing like a fool. You're no bird. You're a half-grown man. And a man's joy is to work, not to sing. You hear? Yes, sir, I hear you. And drop off a sack of feed to Cartwrights. We voted to him for a week now. Yes, sir, I will. She stuck her head in a buttermilk jar and washed her sins away. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. The higher up the cherry tree, the riper grows the cherry. The more you hug and kiss the girls, the sooner they will marry. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. How you doing, Andy? Oh, hi, little Joe. I'm just bringing back that green you bought, Linus. Well, there was no hurry with it. Thanks anyway. How things going at your place? Ah, uh, you know, Pa's been keeping me busy. We've been clearing that new ground, and that doesn't leave me too much time for anything <laughs> else. Pa wants to plow it this fall. Have you heard anything from Adam? Yeah, yeah, got a letter from him last week. He's in Paris now. He's uh, going to spend the winter and spring there. Boy, 
Would I love to see some of those places? My ma used to always tell me about London and Paris and Rome, and she'd been to every one of them. Well, who knows? You might get to see them someday. Uh, those places might as well be on the other side of the moon, as far as I'm concerned. I'm lucky to get off the farm long enough to go to Virginia City. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. You going into town? Yeah. Listen, give me time to saddle up my horse, I'll go with you. Sure. I'll buy you a beer. Although that is, if your pot don't mind. Well, I've... I've never had a beer, or even been in a saloon, for that matter. I guess it's about time. Good deal. I'll be with you in a minute. Good. Very good, very good. I see you got the wagon unloaded. Yeah, the sacks gave out about 10 seconds before I did. Well, I don't know about you. I'm ready for the beer. Come on. No, maybe I better. Ah, oh, come on, Annie. One beer's not going to hurt anything. Hey, that song. Where's it coming from? Annie, it is coming from the same place where we're going to get the beer. Come on, let's go. Lovely ribbons, scarlet ribbons, scarlet ribbons for her hair. Come on, Lil, pick it up. Your feet are dragging. Look, at this hour of the morning, I'm lucky to be standing on them. All the stores were closed and shuttered. All the streets were dark and bare. In our town, no scarlet ribbons. Not Howdy. Ribbons Good morning, old Joe. Have a couple of beers, Cosmo. Right away. Just before the dawn was breaking, I peeked in and on her bed in gay profusion lying there. Lovely ribbons, scarlet ribbons. Two beers, old Joe. Yeah, thanks, Cosmo. Andy, your beer's here. I will never know from where came What's the matter? You want something stronger? No, it's not that. Huh? Lovely ribbons, it's not that. Ribbons, what? I can't hear you. I said she's singing it all wrong. I haven't even finished my first cup of coffee, and already I've got a critic. Uh, he, he didn't mean anything by that, Miss Lily. Uh, he, he was just kidding you. Y yes, ma'am. You got a right to sing it any way you want to. Oh, even if I was singing it all wrong, huh? Y yes, ma'am. Even then. Huh. Whoever made you a critic, Mr. Whatever your name is? My ma, she, she didn't make me an expert on music, but she did teach me how that song ought to be sung. Hey, Mike, let's listen to the maestro here. Let him show us how the song really ought to be done. Well, sure, if you really want me to. Step right up, take stage. The, the way you did it was just fine, except a little bit slow. I peeked in to say good night. Then I heard my child in prayer. And for me, some scarlet ribbons, scarlet ribbons. For my hair All the stars were closed and shuttered All Hey, kid, keep going No, I, uh, I better not well, I've heard enough. Enough to know you've got a beautiful voice. Well, it gets the hogs in for feeding, at least. Well, you sure surprised me, Eddie. I thought it was great. Thank you, Joe. How long you been studying, kid? Well, the only studying I ever did is what my ma used to teach me. But why'd she stop? She died four years ago. Why? Well, I better be getting back because... My pa wouldn't like my being here. See you, Joe. No, I'm coming with you. Take it easy. Thanks for the beer, Cosby. Sure. Yeah.
You ain't eating, you sick? No, Pa, I'm fine. I was just thinking. Well, thinking don't stick to your ribs like stew. Then won't get that plow picked up in town tomorrow. I haven't forgotten the plow, Pa. I'm just remembering that piano we had when Ma was with us. Did you ever think about getting us another piano, Pa? No. I just thought it'd be nice to have a little music around the house, that's all. We had music around when your mom was alive. When she died, so did music. What got you thinking about a piano? Oh, nothing, Pa. It just crossed my mind, that's all. Well, uncross it. Maybe birds got time for songs, but farmers don't. Ma used to say it, the whole world's a song if you just listen hard enough. Yeah, she did say that. But she's gone. There'll never be another like her. You're right, Pa. There'll never be anybody like her. Thank you, Pa. Mike, play the kids' version of the Scarlet Ribbons, hmm? picture this. We had half the place mad with us because we played Dixie. And the other half is mad because we played Battle Hymn of the Republic. Now, if you think this is such an easy job, what do you think we played to keep peace? Peace me. God save the queen confused them all. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go over and see if I got any room at the barber shop. Just a trim. Mike. Lily, why don't you ask Andy about, you know, what we talked about the other night? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> what, uh, 
What were you supposed to ask me about? Andy, how would you like to work here? Me? I don't know how to do anything in a saloon. Well, you can sing. Yeah, but I'm not a real singer. Ah, but, but you could be. And I could start teaching you. Look, Andy, I've been around singers, sweet and sour, all of my life. And I know you can make it. No, my pa never let me. Working in a saloon. It's not what you work inside of that counts, Andy. It's what's inside of you. Don't you want to sing? I think you'd like to try it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess I would. Then ask your pa. Just ask him. For me. I, uh, I better be getting home. Bye, Miss Lily. Bye. But it's not as if I'll be away when you need me, Paul. I've said all I'm going to say about it, boy. Okay, Paul, you've had your say. Now let me have mine. You already have. But, Paul, she's just going to teach me how to sing right, that's all. Disrespect for your father is what you'll be teaching you. I don't want you having anything to do with a saloon girl like her. Paul, she's a nice lady, and she says I got a real good voice. I've said all I'm going to say about it, boy. But, Paul, all I want is... What you want don't matter. Can't you understand that? Yeah, Paul, I'm getting to understand that real well. What's that mean? It means I, I've had enough of that kind of talk, Paul. Now I'm... I'm warning you. You're warning me? Just what you got in mind, Mr. Big Britches. I'll leave, Paul. I'll leave and I'll never come back. You can pack up and get out any time suits you. But, Paul, I'm your son. I lost my son about 30 seconds ago. Well, Mom, I'm leaving. I don't think it's anybody's fault. It's just a natural way of things. I can't be just a son for always. I gotta be a man on my own. So it's natural for a son to leave. But it ain't natural that it's gotta be done with so much pain. Pa's been afraid ever since you left, Mom. It's like he thinks the only thing that he can love is just the earth. Not the people. Not the things they do. But just the earth. Ma used to always tell me that if I listened real hard, I could hear the breeze singing. Well, I hope someday a, a good breeze will come along. And you'll be able to hear me too. Bye, Ma.
How you doing? Fine, just fine, little Joe. Yeah, I can, uh, I can see that by the sign. Yeah, just fine if you overlook the fact that I left home and I'm flat broke. You sure you're doing the right thing? Yeah, and don't try to talk me out of it because I've made my own decision. And I'm gonna be a singer. Miss Lily's gonna help me. Look, I wasn't trying to talk you out of anything. I was trying to talk you into a job. We got some horses out at the ranch that need breaking. We need another man. Not anymore, you don't. We got a deal. Come on down to the stable, I'll get your horse. How you doing? Oh. I have had some day. I feel like I've been busting Bronx for a week. Are you trying to tell me you're not going to sit down for dinner? <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you, I'm real proud of you, though. You didn't know, but I had an eye on you today. You did real fine. Well, thank you for giving me the job. Well, thank you for taking it. Of course, don't rest on your laurels. We got quite a tough batch of horses picked out for you tomorrow. Nothing like those feather beds you were on today. None of those feather beds like you had today. You could have gone all week without saying that. <laughs> Come on, I'll get you some liniment. Okay. Pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountain side. The summer's gone and all the roses are falling. Tis you, tis you must go, and I must bide. But come you back when summer's on the meadow, or when the valley's hushed. And white with snow It's I'll be here And sunlight in shadow Oh, Danny boy Oh I don't know nobody named Danny, but doggone it, every time I hear that, it chokes me up. I think maybe the way Andy was singing it had something to do with that house. Gee, I hope Adam doesn't mind my using his guitar. Oh, heck, none of us can play. It was just gathering dust till you picked it up. You keep playing it that way. <laughs> I understand you're taking some singing lessons, too. Well, sort of. I mean, not from a real teacher. It's just Miss Lily down at the Silver Dollar. Now, Andy, just because Miss Lily sings to the Silver Dollar doesn't mean that she can't sing or teach. Hey, they offered you a job over there at the Silver Dollar, didn't they? Yeah, I start this Friday if I want to. Did you uh, tell your pa about this? Well, I better be getting over to the bunkhouse. I got a long day tomorrow. Good night, fellas. Excuse me, sir. Good night. Good night, Good night Andy. Andy. Good night, Andy. Now, 
Well, I wish somebody could, I don't know, talk to his father, try to explain the boy's side of it. Yeah. Well, let's go to bed. Yeah. Summers in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow, for it's a got nothing to say to each other. Well, something I'd like to say to you. You know, Andy's working at the Ponderosa. You can tell him from me. Ain't no use sending you here begging my forgiveness. Well, he didn't send me here. There's doers and there's dreamers in this world, Ben. And a dreamer's just bound to get in my way. His mother did that. She was a good woman. Meant a whole lot to me, she did. But she had her head in the clouds. Head and heart, too, for all I know. She was a fine woman. And she never seemed to understand that life is hard facts. She taught Andy to think like she did. Singing ain't gonna fix this old fence of mine. Now, Willard, the way Andy sings, you ought to be proud of him. Do you know that... That people are paying to hear him sing? For money? Where? At the Silver Dollar. I'd be obliged if you'd let me get on with the work, Ben Cartwright. All right, Willard. You keep right on building that fence. You make sure it's real strong so nobody can get in. And make sure it's real high, so nobody can look in and see how alone Willard Walker really is. A brand new, wonderful singing talent, a young man from your own Virginia City, Mr. Andrew Walker! To say good night, then I heard my child in prayer. Send to God some scarlet ribbon, scarlet ribbon for my hair. All the stars were closed and shuttered. All the streets were dark and bare In our town, no scarlet ribbons 
Hey, Lily. Sam here just told a story. Sam just told a story that's going to get you thrown out of here on your backside. If you don't shut up and listen, now pipe down, you galoots. Better be getting on. Oh, Joe Clark had a house 16 stories high. Every story in that house was filled with chicken pie. Farewell, old Joe Clark. Farewell, I'm gone. Farewell, old Joe Clark. Better be getting on. I went down to old Joe's house, never been there before. He slept on a feather bed and I slept on the floor. I went down to old Joe's. Mister, we don't want any trouble. Leave him alone. How much more shame and humiliation I got to take in account of your singing, boy? No more, Paul. No more. Just thought I'd come over and see how you were doing. Fine. I talked to Lily. She wanted me to come over and tell you how bad she felt about the other night. She kind of feels responsible for what happened. It wasn't her fault, Joe. It wasn't anybody's fault but mine. I disobeyed my father, little Joe. I disgraced him by making a public spectacle out of myself by singing in a saloon. But I'll never do it again. Because I'll never sing again. Oh, look, that doesn't make sense. There was nothing wrong with what you did. There's nothing wrong with singing. Singing's a sin, little Joe. My pa made me see it, and I see it. I hurt him, and I humiliated him. I'll never sing again. That wagon load of horseshoes? Yeah. Also run into Indian Town. Looks like you had that situation pretty well figured out. Yeah. You don't laugh anymore, you don't smile. It doesn't seem like he enjoys life at all. I'm getting more like a Willard every day. Yeah, I was afraid of that. His father's got him convinced that singing and laughing are a sin. Ah, I just sort of hear that. Oh, it looks like there ought to be something we could do. I mean. Get them together and talk to them. Maybe invite them over for dinner or something, huh? Hey, what about on Easter Sunday? I think we ought to do something like that. That gives me an idea. 
Like what? You fellas go ahead and eat. I got me an errand to do. Good afternoon, Willard. Good afternoon, Reverend. Uh, Willard, I brought Reverend Porter along because, uh, well, there's something that uh, he thinks you can help him with, uh, if you will, that is. Well, if I can, I uh, expect I'll help. Well, Willard, you might say this concerns my entire congregation. As you know, Easter services will be held in a few days, and, uh, well... Well, what Reverend Porter's trying to say is that he'd like Andy to sing in his church on Easter Sunday. Well, that's... Hard to say. There's chores and... Willard. Willard in church. Now, there's nothing heathenish about that, is there? I mean, he's not going to be doing the devil's work in Reverend Porter's chapel now, is he? Well, I, I never thought of it. Your wife used to sing for us, Willard. And I'm told that Andy here has her same feeling for a song. It would certainly be a shame if that feeling couldn't be put to use for the benefit of the Lord on that most holy of days. Yeah, sure would be a shame. But it's, uh, it's up to, it's up to you, Willard. And he's your son. The boy can make up his own mind. He did before. It's your decision, son. But I think I know what your mother would want you to do. Yes, sir. I'll sing if you want me to. Well, you got what you come for. If you'd let us get on with our work now. Little Joe told me I'd find you here. I came to congratulate you. What for? Because of your singing again. You are going to sing again, aren't you? Reverend Porter asked me to. But... But it's... It's not the same. It used to be that singing was like a deep breath on a spring morning to me. Now it's something I'll do because I said I would, that's all. There's no joy anymore. But, Andy... It's true, Miss Lily. You saw my father in the saloon. It doesn't matter whether he's right or wrong. I just know that I never want to be the cause of that much pain again. Andy, I suppose I'm the last one to talk about what's right or wrong, but well, there's one thing I know. If there's anything in this, this whole world that's right, it's your singing. That joy will return, Andy. I know it will. Come on, Andy. 
Hi, Mr. Cartwright. Where's your pa? I guess he isn't coming. Well, it's Easter Sunday. Well, he's clearing the new field. He says that going to church is a waste of time. Catch up with you. Well, let me help you with that. No, I can get it alone. Well, it's going to take all morning, isn't it? I ain't got nothing else to do. Aren't you coming to church with me? What for? Listen to that boy bellow like a sick calf? No. Well, it mean an awful lot to the boy. I got more important things to do here. Lord made a man to work, didn't he? Well, even the Lord rested on the seventh day when he looked at his labor and saw it was good. If you're going to quote the Bible at me, Ben, what about the fifth commandment? Honor thy father. It's a commandment that I've lived by, an unwritten one. Honor thy son. I ain't wrong. A man was made for work. What else are we good for? They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen.
so I'll share My wife used to sing that song. It's beautiful the way he sings it. Till my trophies at last I 